This video focuses on the biochemical mechanism behind PARP inhibitors, an exciting new treatment agent that can be used for targeted cancer therapy. As the primary carrier of genetic information, DNA and the maintenance of its integrity is of the utmost importance to cell survival. Yet in each cell cycle, DNA is damaged thousands of times by mutagenizing agents like UV light, ionizing radiation, replication errors, chemical agents, and cellular metabolism. This introduces flaws, such as single and double-stranded breaks into the DNA structure, which must be repaired for cell survival. Two vital pathways for DNA repair involve the breast cancer 1 and 2 genes, known as BRCA1 and BRCA2, and polyADP ribose polymerase, known as PARP. Mutations in BRCA1 and 2 are well known for their association with increased risk of breast cancer. In the context of DNA repair, BRCA1 and 2 recognizes and repairs double-stranded breaks via homologous recombination. PARP is a related enzymatic pathway that repairs single-stranded breaks in DNA. To understand how PARP inhibitors work, we must first consider how PARP functions. PARP is a nuclear globular protein that contains three functional domains, an N-terminus DNA binding domain containing several zinc finger motifs, a central auto-modification domain, and a C-terminus catalytic domain, CAT, that houses the protein's enzymatic activity and substrate binding sites for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NAD+, which powers the protein. Within this domain, there is a WGR, tryptophan, glycine, and arginine motif, which serves to activate the enzymatic activity of the CAT region. The catalytic domain also contains highly conserved histidine and tyrosine residues, which are necessary for NAD plus binding. A PARP inhibitor will compete with NAD plus at this substrate binding site. Thus, PARP inhibitors function through competitive inhibition. In the absence of an inhibitor, PARP will be recruited to a single-stranded break site, which it identifies with its zinc finger nucleases. Then PARP initiates polyADP ribosylation of histones and chromatin remodeling enzymes. The presence of polyADP ribose chains, synthesized by PARP, recruits PARP-dependent DNA repair proteins. Finally, PARP and repair complexes dissociate from DNA for recycling, and the single-stranded break is repaired, leading to cell survival. In the presence of a, of a PARP inhibitor, PARP is still recruited to a single-stranded break site. However, PARP can no longer activate PARP-dependent DNA repair proteins because its catalytic activity can no longer be powered by NAD+. Therefore, PARP remains bound to the DNA, stalling the replication fork through DNA replication. This stalling leads to a double-stranded break formation. In a BRCA-proficient cell, this is repaired through homologous recombination, so PARP inhibitors will not affect the cell's vitality and ultimately, the cell survives. In contrast, in a BRCA-deficient cell, homologous recombination is impaired and the double-stranded break persists, which eventually leads to cell death. In summary, normal cells utilize both BRCA1-2 and PARP pathways to repair DNA. Conversely, in a BRCA1-2 mutant, the cell relies solely on the PARP pathway for DNA repair. This prevents the accumulation of DNA damage. However, in the presence of a PARP inhibitor, there is synthetic lethality because loss of both genes leads to cell death. Thus, PARP inhibitors will be harmful only to cancer cells, which is the goal of targeted treatments. Researchers are able to quantitatively illustrate PARP inhibitor specificity to BRCA1-2 deficient cells. An experiment was conducted in the Halliday lab where BRCA2 deficient cells and normal cells were treated with NU1025, a PARP inhibitor. In this graph, the solid black line represents BRCA2 deficient cells, and the black line with white circles represents normal cells. The addition of a PARP inhibitor causes a drastic decrease in cell survival, up to 90% cell death in BRCA2 deficient cells, while the normal cells remain unaffected, proving that PARP inhibitors are effective in vitro. PARP inhibition is still a growing field, and significant research is being conducted, as was explained during an interview with Dr. Roger Greenberg. We have a particular emphasis on the um, hereditary breast and ovarian cancer genes, BRCA1 and BRCA2. Uh, both of the gene products, the proteins, are involved in homologous recombination, and this is critical for their function as a tumor suppressor uh, and for uh, responses to exciting new uh, targeted therapies uh, called PARP inhibitors or polyADP ribose polymerase inhibitors. Uh, these agents have now been approved uh, for BRCA mutant ovarian cancer, and they can be efficacious as single agents. Uh, a major problem, however, is clinical resistance. As mentioned, the future of PARP inhibition research will be directed towards clinical applications such as combating resistance acquired through alternate repair pathways. 
The continuing research on DNA repair pathways in general has the ability to lead to new treatments for a myriad of different cancers.